There may be no better place to begin our adventure in discovering New York than here in Battery Park. Battery Park is at the southern point of Manhattan, facing out into New York Harbor. For it was here, almost 400 years ago, that the Dutch first landed foot on this island. They, of course, were looking for the passage to India. They didn't find it. Instead, they found a land of opportunity. They found a place of abundance. And so they planted an ambitious colony here. They called it New Amsterdam. And to protect New Amsterdam, they set up ramparts as batteries faced out towards the harbor to stop any invading countries from coming and taking the colony away. It was those batteries that gave this park its name. And so there are layers of history. There's great beauty. There are backstories, some of which you may have never heard. This is the story of Battery Park and the beginning of the story of New York City, a city that some consider one of the greatest cities on earth. Manhattan's about 25% bigger today than it was 400 years ago because of landfill. So what intellectual curiosity got you started on this pathway? I'm a scientist and I work for the Wildlife Conservation Society. This is Eric Sanderson. He painstakingly traced the history of New York all the way back to the 1600s and has presented the natural environment the way it was from this period all the way to present day. It was called the Manhattan Project. You were the first one to teach us that Manhattan had elevation. Right, I was really interested in what, you know, what this place was like 400 years ago. So if we could have come and been on Henry Hudson's ship when he first sailed into New York Harbor and passed Manhattan Island, what might he have seen? And would have seen this long, narrow, thin island it was covered with hills and with trees. And one of the etymologies of Manhattan is the island of many hills. The Lenape called it Manahata. Manahata, that's where we get the word Manhattan from. And there were more than 500 hills on Manhattan. Directly across from the museum entrance is Bowling Green, New York's oldest park. This spot has long been a center of activity for the city. It served as the council ground for Native American tribes, was the site of the legendary sale of Manhattan to Peter Minuit, and was near the city's first public well. So moving forward out of the Dutch era, how did Bowling Green sort of gain its significance? It in effect was the parade grounds, it was where the markets would be, it was where people would gather to have fun, to gossip. This is Arthur Piccolo the chairman of the Bowling Green Association and foremost authority on everything Battery Park. The story of the creation of the park, of course, is fascinating. The only sport that existed in those days was lawn bowling. And the colonists liked to play lawn bowling. They couldn't play anything else because that was their only sport. And it turned out they wanted a more manicured. They wanted to play it in a quality way. So three local colonial business people said, we will pay for this. And the city agreed to make it official as a park. The first sports facility, official sports facility in America was right here, Bowling Green Park. So, you know, those kind of things do embellish the history of this park. It's not a surprise that the early explorers, when they came into this harbor, realized its potential. There it is, Manhattan, just pointing out towards an open, deep body of water, rivers on both sides. No matter how much the skyline changes, it has never failed to impress people for the past 200 years. And watching over this ever-changing cityscape since 1886, is a cultural icon like no other. The French were always our friends. They helped us out in the Revolutionary War to defeat Great Britain, and later would share the ideals of liberty and equality and justice, so much so that the idea came about to build a statue to commemorate that idea of liberty. And so Friedrich Balthaldi 
created the Statue of Liberty, assembled here in 1886. The deal was that the French would design the statue and the Americans would contribute the pedestal upon which she stood. It wasn't until a contest was launched to place a plaque with a poem on this pedestal to dedicate it that the conception of who the Statue of Liberty was to America changed. Emma Lazarus wrote The New Colossus, talking about immigrants, tempest tossed on these shorelines. And an interesting thing in the eyes of those who came into this harbor, there wasn't a giant statue of a soldier or a conqueror protecting the harbor. It was actually a woman, specifically, it was Bartholdi's mother. So all my life I've read the stories, I've seen the pictures, I've seen fireworks around Lady Liberty during the 4th of July, and I always wanted to see her. So for all the symbolism that she represents, she is inspiring.